and Costello program, brought to you by Camels. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes, Billy Gray as Little Matilda, the famous cartoon character Bugs Bunny, tonight's guest, Metro Golden Mayor star of Marriage is a Private Affair, Miss Lana Turner, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. This way for the Abbott and Costello Show. Tickets, please. See the Abbott and Costello Show. Really, folks, it's a good show. Won't somebody please come in? Come on in, you cowards! <laughs> okay, okay, Ken Niles. Why, it's Bud Abbott. Hello, Bud. Oh, hello, Mr. Abbott. Welcome back. Thanks, Mrs. Niles. Uh, listen, have either one of you seen Costello? He was supposed to meet me here in the lobby of NBC. And it's almost time to start the broadcast. Well, personally, I don't care if Costello never shows up. All last season, he did nothing but insult me. But, Mrs. Niles, don't tell me you're carrying a grudge for, for a year. Well, why not? I've got a sister I haven't spoken to in 20 years. And Costello reminds me of my sister, except for the mustache. But Costello hasn't got a mustache. No, but my sister has. <laughs> Look who it is. Hey, Abbott! <laughs> Costello, where have you been? Look at you. You're perspiring something awful. I ain't perspiring, Abbott. I just took a shower with my shirt, socks, and underwear on. You took a shower with your shirt, socks, and underwear on? What's the idea? Do you know a quicker way to get your laundry done? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, Kenneth, did you hear that joke? Yes, dear. There will now be a slight pause for station fumigation. <laughs> Hey, Abbott, don't tell me that's Mr. and Mrs. Niles. Well, Mr. Costello, doesn't it look like us? I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I was getting sick again. Uh, <laughs> Co Costello, no fighting, please. It's, it's almost time. It's almost time to go on the air. I mean, oh, yeah. Ready to go on the air. That's right. I can hardly wait to get in front of that microphone. And also with Lana Turner. Hey, come on, Abbott. Come on. Let's just get inside the studio. Minute, just a minute, Mr. Who are you, Costello. Who are you, who are you? But I'm the NBC manager, Fogel. You're what? I'm Fogel. What are you doing for it? <laughs> no, Mr. Costello, you don't understand. You've been a pretty sick young man, and we'd like to have the NBC doctor check you over before you go into the studio. Are you kidding? I gotta get on the air. My public is waiting for me. Oh, I wouldn't worry about him. Oh, him? He's a nice guy. Hey, Abbott! Let me get that guy! Now, 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 Costello, take We've got it. more than one. I know, but We've take... got three! You all right, take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy, please. Take it easy. Remember your blood pressure. Oh, there's nothing wrong with my blood pressure. When I was down in Palm Springs, I used to drill with the soldiers. Well, that's strenuous. Oh, I should have to tell you. I did everything they did. I'd get up at Sunday morning, and I'd take a 20-mile hike, exercise for three hours, drill for three more hours, and then I'd get up Tuesday morning. What happened to Monday? <laughs> Wait a minute. What happened to Monday? What happened to Monday? Yeah. You should be so inquisitive. Yeah. Who got up Monday? Well, oh, I see. I didn't get up Monday. I can see that. Well, Mr. Costello, how about the physical examination? We can't let you in the studio without it. I tell you, there's nothing wrong with me, Poogle. No, 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 no. Poogle. Stop yelling, Costello. Watch your pressure. But do you see anything wrong with me, Abbott? Well, your legs look a little weak. They're bending way out. Oh, I can't help that. It's a long pull from my socks to my garter belt. <laughs> Not in the studio, Costello. We're going on the air. Okay, Niles. Come on, Abbott. Let's go. I've been waiting eight months to meet Lana Turner. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Costello. Now what? I'm from the insurance firm of Birch Bark and Canoe. I'm Birch Bark. Where's Canoe? He went up the river. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every show must have a bad joke. This one is on us. Now, thank you. Now, look, mister, our program is going on the air, and we're in a hurry to get to the studio. Exactly why I'm here. Mr. Costello, in view of your long illness, the network has sent me over to check up on your insurance. They must be protected, you know. Now, how about some life insurance? No life insurance for me, brother. Why not? I took some out a couple of years ago, and nothing happened. No, no. <laughs> no, Costello, he means a policy. Are you interested in a straight life? A straight light? Yes. No, sir. I'd like to sneak out once in a while. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, but the payments on this policy, Mr. Costello, are very low. For instance, it's much higher in Canada. And do you know the premium in England? 
Sure, Churchill. <laughs> I mean, after all, it calls for it. Abbott, will you get this guy away from me? I'll miss the broadcast. No, shut up, Costello. Pay attention. All right, forget straight insurance. We also have 10-year endowment, 20 pay life, annuities, and health insurance with double indemnity. Now, what would you like to take out? Lana Turner. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, Costello, he's talking about something that'll be good for you in your old age. So am I. I... <laughs> now, look here, Costello. Let's pretend you're in an accident. What would you do if you lost a leg? Well, what I care? I got another one. <laughs> no, no. What do you think our company would give you for that leg? Two hundred and fifty dollars. Abbott, here's a guy, if I lose a leg, wants to give me two hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, you see anything like that before? Two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty dollars for one leg. Yeah. I won't sell. I... <laughs> no, you don't understand. Why, last year, my company gave over one million dollars for broken legs alone. What did they do with all the legs? No. <laughs> Who did they give them? No, 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 look, look, Costello, you, you don't Lake understand. Diamond? They don't do anything with them. Whatever happened to Lake Diamond? I don't know. Look, that's, that's a different party entirely. You don't understand. You see, listen, every time there's an accident, somebody gets paid off. For example, yesterday a man breaks his leg, he gets $500. Today, somebody breaks his neck, he gets 1000 I wonder who will hit the jackpot tomorrow. I... <laughs> Has nothing to do with the jackpot. Now, for instance, if I sprain both knees and break both ankles, I get $10,000. Or I can settle for $3,000 by waving both knees. How much do you get if you wiggle your ears? <laughs> hey, look, Abbott, I had enough of this. Now, I want to get to my broadcast. Come on. Ah, Costello, you haven't had your examination yet. Get out of my way, Fugu. Yeah, Costello, Costello, you're going in the wrong door. That's a closet. Don't That's a closet. Gosh, Fibber McGee. <laughs> in the orchestra with a modern treatment of an old favorite. Put your arms around me, honey. They must put my foot down, Mr. Mr. Costello. You must be examined by the NBC doctor before you can be allowed in your studio. But what about my program, Fogel? Lana Turner's waiting for me. Oh, don't worry, Costello. You can prove you're all right. Anyway, he's a fine doctor. Oh, he is? Yes. What's his name? Dr. Jones. Ph.D., M.D.S., L.L.D. What school did you go to? That's a fine way to spell Jones. Oh. <laughs> Ph.D., M.D.S., L.L.D. All right, all right, all right never mind. Spells Jones. Go on in, will you? Will you go in, please? Okay. Uh, Dr. Jones, this is Mr. Costello. He's been very sick for a long time, and he must be examined before we can let him in the studio. I'll be right back. Yes, certainly, Fugel. Now, Mr. Costello, take off your coat, vest, tie, shirt, undershirt, socks, shoes, and suspenders. Uh, do you mind if I leave the hair on my chest? <laughs> Costello, quiet. Go ahead, Dr. Jones. Now, open your mouth, Costello. Wider. 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 Hmm, my brother would like to see that. Abbott. Is he a doctor? No, he's looking for an apartment. <laughs> I think I got things mixed up. <laughs> hey, Abbott, come here. That guy's no doctor. Oh, no. What do you mean he's no doctor? That's my line, please. <laughs> uh, 
And by the way, yes, what do you mean by saying that? Thank you. I knew I heard that someplace before. Yeah. <laughs> Another one has said it. Hey, Abbott. You know, I don't see his thermometer. I don't see his stethoscope. I don't see Lana Turner. What's Lana Turner got to do with it? Nothing. I'd just like to see her. <laughs> I resent this, Mr. Costello. What am I, stupid? A dope? A moron? Try numbskull. What am I, a numbskull? <laughs> I like stupid better. <laughs> Costello, stop that. Continue with the examination, Doctor. Very well. Now, Mr. Costello, just hold still and I'll listen to your heart. My, that's strange. Your heart sounds like a clock. Good heavens. <laughs> the alarm rang at eight. I can't understand it. Neither can I, Doc. I set it for seven. <laughs> Costello, we talk sense. Dr. Jones is a Johns Hopkins man. So what? My father sent me to Wilson. Well, well, what words? My father sent me to Wellesley. <laughs> Wellesley is a girls' school. I know. My father always wanted me to have the things he didn't have. <laughs> Come in. Oh, doctor, 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 can I do it now? Yeah, just go ahead, Miss Cruz. Lay that pistol down, babe. Lay that pistol down. A pistol packing, mama. Yeah, yeah, Lay yeah. That pistol yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. Let's follow them. Okay. You're wasting your time, boys. Those people are going in to see John's other wife. Are you kidding? John's other wife? Yes. Who are you? Who am I? Yes. Yeah. I'm John. <laughs> Get me out of here! Now, that's the last straw. Everything happens to me. Doctors, insurance men, John's other wife, Google. I'll never make the program. Yeah. Watch up, Doc. Now, Costello, it's a little rabbit. Yeah, from the cartoon. It's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Say, Bugs, what are you doing over here at NBC? Well, I came over to see your program, fellas. Uh, I get tired of eating carrots. I like a little corn once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny for a rabbit. <laughs> you like it, Doc? You know, we could make a great team. Rabbit and Costello. Uh <laughs> Say, he's pretty cute, Costello. Uh, why don't we keep him around? Sure, Doc. I can be your bread and butter. Yeah, but who wants a hair in his butter? <laughs> Come on, Abbott. We're wasting time. Now, don't leave me, fellas. I'm feeling very sad today. What's wrong? Well, I broke up with my girl, Doc. We was going steady. Every day I used to bring her a carrot corsage. And boy, did we have fun. We gamble over the fields together, play hopscotch and check up on the victory gardens. But it's all over, fellas. I guess we were just never meant for each other. Why not? She was a gopher. <laughs> now, listen, Bugs, will you stop annoying me? All I want to do is to get into the studio. Well, why didn't you say so, Doc? Look, all you have to do is go through that door, turn left, turn right, go two miles over the Skyway, three miles over the Byway, then six miles down the highway, and before you know it, you'll see Lana Turner taking a sunbath on a patio. But that ain't my studio. I know, Doc, but that's living. <laughs> Do what? Look, Rabbit. Uh, Abbott. <laughs> Abbott, Rabbit. What's the difference? Look, Abbott. Rabbit. Ma Abbott. Will you get him out of here? Oh, give me a break, Doc. Let me hang around your program and pick up a few nickels, huh? I'm a family man. By the way, Bugs, how do you stand in the draft? Well, they just reclassified me 1A. And I got 480 kids. Wait a minute. Just a minute. They wouldn't put you in 1A if you got 480 kids. I'm a rabbit, Doc. They came after Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Scotty Haynes back with us again. She sings the new rhythmic hit. They're either too young or too old. You marched away and left this town as empty as can be. I can't live under an apple tree with anyone else but me. For there is no secret lover. That the draft board can't discover. They're either too young or too old. There 
is a too gray or too grassy green. The pickings are poor and the crop is green. There isn't any gravy, the gravy in the Navy. They're either too old or too young. So darling, you never get stung. Tomorrow I'll go hiking with that eagle scout on left. I got a call from Grandpa for a snappy game of chess. I'm finding it easy to stay good at school. They're either too young or too old. There isn't any gravy, gravy in the Navy. They're either too fresh or too stale. There is no available meal. I must confess to one romance I'm sure you will allow. He tries to serenade me, but his voice is changing now. I'm finding it easy to stay good at school, either too young or too old. I'll never, never fail you while you are in Australia. And when you get to India, I'll still be what I've been to you. I've looked the field over, and lo and behold, they'll take the army, they'll take the navy, cause they're either too young or too And now back to Abbott and Costello, who are still having trouble getting into the studio. Oh, boys. Oh, boys, wait a minute. Oh, Fogel. That's an understatement. I have some very good news for you, Mr. Costello. You can go on the air now. Your basal metabolism is impeccable, while your hemoglobin content is rich in hypothyroidism, and your capillaries are simply pulsating. Now, listen, brother. Watch your language. I got my mother's picture in my pocket. <laughs> oh, will you stop that, please? Mr. Fugel means the doctor has given you an okay to broadcast. Come in the studio. And keep quiet. The program's on. Okay. Oh, my darling Lana, come into my arms. Kenneth, my dear, I love you madly. Hey, Abbott! That Niles is playing my part! <laughs> yes, and look who the girl is. Lana Turner. All right, Niles, come on, break it up, break it up. Oh, just a moment. Uh, Mr. Niles and I are playing a love scene. That Niles is no lover. Oh, yeah? I've kissed women who wouldn't look at you. Oh, yeah? I've kissed women who wouldn't look at me either. <laughs> Costello, will you stop fighting? I'm not fighting, Abbott. Now, listen, Niles. On this program, you take care of the announcing. Period. And you take care of the comedy. Question mark. <laughs> Why, Niles, I'll... Oh, please. They don't even let me finish a line! I'll... Please, I appeal to you as a woman. Well, if you're gonna appeal to me as a woman, of course. If you were a man, you wouldn't appeal to me. <laughs> at all! All right, all right. I'm sorry, Miss Turner. Please forgive Costello. He, he's a little impulsive. Repulsive? No, no. He said impulsive. I-M-P-U. Well, we all have our <laughs> Now, listen, you wouldn't talk that way, Lana, if you saw my last picture. Oh, you mean the one where you were on the ice? <clears throat> That's the one. What did you think of it? <laughs> you certainly kept well. <laughs> hey, Abbott, watch this girl. All oh, quiet. Come on, Costello. This is where we're supposed to do a love scene. Abbott, I didn't know you cared. Well, I do. Lo ah, never mind that. You want to do a love scene with me? No, 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 no. Let's I mean... pick out the furniture. Will you keep quiet, please? <laughs> no remarks. I mean, a love scene with uh, Lana... That's way back. Listen. <laughs> Lou. Lou, this might be interesting to you. I'm talking about a love scene with Lana Turner. Oh, I just adore love scenes. Are you ready, Mr. Niles? Mr. Niles? You heard that, Costello. She wants me. <laughs> you see, Lana, since I put Niles on his program, success went to his head. Mm, from where I'm standing, it looks like success went to your stomach. <laughs> Did you hear that, Abbott? What an insult. Oh, she's right, Costello. You are fat. Well, I may be a little fat on the outside, but underneath, I'm solid flab. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Niles. Get on with the love scene. Yeah, but what about me? Ooh, 
you, you can play a love scene with uh, Mrs. Niles. I heard that, and I'd love to play a love scene with you, Mr. Costello. Don't call me Costello. Call me Dick Tracy. <laughs> well, that's silly. Why should I call you Dick Tracy? So I can call you Prune Face. <laughs> Uh, did you get that ad lib, Lana? <clears throat> That's what put me on the top of the ladder. Yes, and your audience is at the bottom, daring you to come down. <laughs> well, Costello, I'm waiting. So is your broom. Why don't you fly out of here? <laughs> now, that's not nice, Costello. Mrs. Niles has some very fine points. Yes, yeah, she certainly has. For instance, Costello, take her hair. Okay, throw it over here. I, I... <laughs> Oh, I don't know what's wrong with you, Costello. You, you fight with everybody. I can't help it, Abbott. Oh. All those months that I was sick, I was thinking about doing this love scene with Lana Turner. And now she won't even talk to me. Oh, don't feel that way, Lou. The truth is, I dream about you. <laughs> I dream about you every night. You do? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Do you think I can sue Ovaltine? Uh, <laughs> I get it. Oh, yeah, all right, all right. Never mind. You get it. Ovaltine. Yeah, you heard her. We're working for Camel Cigarettes. Never mind that. <laughs> Ovaltine. All right, a little extra change. So we'll get a case. All right, look. <laughs> look, come on. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> Let's get to the play. All right, Mr. Rich, let's have some music to put Costello in the mood. Ken, set the scene. And make it snappy, Niles. The scene is an old castle in England. It is the 16th century when hearts were brave and knighthood was in flower. The night is still, and Lady Lana stands on the balcony awaiting her lover. She has been waiting anxiously, longingly, patiently, hopefully. Come on, Niles, get with it, get with it, get with it, faster, faster, faster. And why not? I can't wait much longer, come on. She hasn't seen her lover in a fortnight. Ah, each minute seems like an hour. You forgot the seconds. Each hour seems like a day. Each day, each day like a week. Each week, like a month. Each, each year. Each month, like a, like a year. Each year. Each year, This like is a, only uh, a half hour program. <laughs> now get with it. Oh, but Lou, he's putting you in the mood to kiss me. I've been in the mood for eight months, kid. <laughs> Abbott, never mind, Niles. You set the scene. Okay, Lou. The stillness of the night is suddenly broken. Now, this guy will set it fast. <laughs> suddenly broken by the sharp clatter of horses' hoofs. Where does the horses come from? The lovely Lana's eyes light up. Her lover is riding into the courtyard on his white charger. Ah, white charger. I don't charge nothing. I pay everything cash. <laughs> he leaps from his horse and starts to climb up to her balcony. Hand over hand. Hand over hand. Two hands over hands. One foot up. The other foot up. Come on, get me up, Abbott. Hurry up. Then one hand up. Then the other hand it's up. It's gonna be too late. Now get me up. Inch by inch. Foot by foot. Yard by yard. Get me up there, will you? I want to kiss the dame. But, Lou, what's your hurry? There's plenty of time. Not for me, kid. I'm in 1A. <laughs> All right. Finally, you reach Lady Lana's side. And the play begins. A play of love. Emotion. An adventure. without music. Ah, Lady Lana, I love you. I kiss you. Oh, or kiss not... me, one or the other. <laughs> but not here, my lover. Why not? Love is paramount. Love is universal. Oh, you're out of luck. I work for MGM. 
Some plug, hey, Lion? <laughs> oh, come on, Lana. I've been waiting eight months for this. All right, Lou. You can kiss me. This is spite work. <laughs> Hello. Mr. Costello, this is Fugle. No kissing in our studio. Kissing spreads germs. Not me. I kiss so hard, I kill him. <laughs> Costello, will you quit fooling around? Who's fooling around? All I want to do is kiss Lana Turner. Oh, come on, Lana. Will you please kiss me? Well, all right, Lou. Now, if you'll just close your eyes, I'll have a big surprise for you. Okay. My eyes are closed. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. Lana Turner's gonna kiss me. Woo! Now, keep your eyes closed. They're closed. Here's the surprise. Are you eating carrots, Lana? <laughs> Lana who, Doc? I'm first. And I'm not when I get me out of here. And now again, we send our thanks to the Yanks of the Week, Americans who have distinguished themselves for heroism in the battle area. To Captain H.D. Maxwell of Pink Hill, North Carolina, and the entire crew of his Liberator bomber who turned their big Ford engine B-24 into a fighter plane when they saw two German Focal Wolf heavy bombers attacking an Allied convoy in the Atlantic. While the huge enemy planes were making their bomb runs on the ships, Captain Maxwell and his men attacked with machine guns. And though cannon and machine gun fire from the enemy wounded every man aboard the Liberator, they shot down one German plane and probably destroyed the other before they themselves crashed in flames. Our airmen were rescued by ships from the convoy they had saved. We salute you and your crew, Captain H.D. Maxwell. And now here's Bud Abbott with a final word. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now that our program is over and we have done our best to entertain you, I would like to take a moment to pay tribute to my best friend and to a man who has more courage than I have ever seen displayed in the theater. Tonight, the old expression, the show must go on, was brought home to all of us on this program, more clearly than ever before. Just a short time before our broadcast started, Luke Costello was told that his baby, one-year-old Tamara, had died. In the face of the greatest tragedy which can come to any man, Luke Costello went on tonight so that you, the radio audience, would not be disappointed. There's nothing more that I can say except and I know you all join me in expressing our deepest sympathy to a great trooper. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting...